Welcome to God of Love. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. This is a very special episode of God of Run. Today, we are honoring the memory of Pavel Limpart. I have three special guests who knew him well, and we are going to talk about a very special 5K in the Lower East Side to honor his memory. My guests are Lydia Vandalo. She is the campaign manager for the team in training. Pavel's sister, Talia, and one of the lead coaches for University Settlement, Ozzy Foster. I'm honored to have these three guests. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, before we go into this very special race, this the inaugural 5K that you guys are setting up, the Revel 5K, like that name, Revel. <laughs> let's talk about Pavel. Tally, let's start with you. You're the sister. Tell us, tell us about him. Pavel was awesome. He was my big brother. He loved doing things. Um, he loved community. Uh, he was a he was a dancer, and he was a musician. He'd been working doing drumming. Well, tell us. He's the big brother. So, where were you born, and did you guys play together athletically when you were growing up? We were both born in Texas. Paul was born in San Antonio, and I was born in Houston. And we grew up in Ithaca, New York. Pablo was very athletic as a kid. He played soccer, and he was he really loved soccer and lacrosse. Um, and he was telling me about some of the training they did for soccer, which involved a lot of running. As he got a little older, he got into dance and musical theater. He, over the years, worked for Disney and um, a lot of kind of off-Broadway stuff, mostly as a dancer and actor. And then in probably, I think, the last 10 years, he'd been working with Drum Cafe and doing drumming, coordinating events. And Where was Drum Cafe? I'm not really sure. It's like he, he would go around and do a lot of kind of corporate team building kind of stuff, which doesn't really let on how cool it was to do these drumming events. Oh, OK. So it wasn't a them. specific place. It's right. a place he went to. Exactly. So it would come to you. OK, he would come to you with the drums. Yeah. Oh, OK. So, so a, a corporation wanted their team oh, to bond go. together, give us a way of, of connecting. Through to Pavel's music, to his artistic endeavors. Yes, that's so cool. And he was just really good at bringing people together, and it's something he did just in life. I mean, ever since he was a a, a kid, he was people really. He was really a magnetic personality, and really a magnetic personality, and that he really kind of brought out the best in people. And I know it sounds goofy, but uh, you know, like. He could really get people to turn on. Like yeah, even yeah. even as a kid with like babysitting, like Ready. kids would take their first steps when he was watching them. I mean, he was really like, it was ridiculous. He was really, really good. And it kind of, as an adult, he was really into his community and like being involved with events and kind of bringing that, that shine okay. everywhere. Sounds like he's a very, very special man. So. So the community, you were speaking about the Lower East Side because eventually yes. you moved to New York. Yeah. Did you move all together at the same time? What happened well, there? Well, we've always had a big connection to the city. My dad grew up in the Bronx, and we used to come here a lot to visit my grandmother and other family when we were growing up. And then Pavel moved here in the 80s, and then he moved down to Florida to work with Disney. And I moved here in 1990, and he moved back. I can't remember when, but shortly thereafter. To the Lower East Side. Yeah, he, well, he was, when he moved back, he lived all, always in Manhattan. I think at one point he lived in Queens. He's an artist, so he yeah. moved around. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he'd been in the Lower East Side for, I guess, about a dozen years. A dozen years? Yeah. He will turn to you, Lydia, because sure. I think you dubbed him the mayor of Grand Street. I did. <laughs> so tell us, how did you meet Pavel? 
So I met Pavel, I guess it's maybe about nine or 10 years ago when my daughter and his younger daughter, Ella, started, high, uh, started kindergarten together. High school, you said, huh? High school. They just <laughs> both started high school this year. Oh, okay. So I'm fast forwarding in my head. Um, Iris and Ella started kindergarten um, together. Well, it's part of the community at, at the school that was basically next door to um, the Lumpert's apartment. And so I got to know him through through the school and through our daughters. And years later, when I started the community track team, Ella was on our team for a couple of years, and I got to know him further through that. But I would echo really everything Talia said about his his uh, magnetic personality and his energy. He was like the kind of guy who would uh, start an event at, you know, drop off or something. <laughs> something would just happen because he was there. Um, an example of this would be um, we would have the elementary school, PS 110 in the Lower East Side, would have an annual fundraiser every year. Pava would put together a band of dads. And it was basically kind of loosely based on a, a drinking group that he had put together called the Granddads. Grand Dads, get it? Grand Street, uh, yeah. Because we're all, there's a bunch of uh, co ops and apartment buildings on Grand Street where a lot of us live. Um, so they would, he would rally the troops and get these dads together, some of who, whom may never have actually been musicians <laughs> mm -hmm. or have ever performed on a stage before, and he would put together a band and they would learn songs that would relate to the theme of the fundraiser. You know, we'd have one, one was on the 80s and one was on the 70s. That was a really classic one that had the YMCA and everything. Um, so, so it was just really, really brought together the community for this big celebration that was a fundraiser for the school, and it was hilarious. It was just everybody was laughing. They would be talking about it for weeks afterwards, and really, he was the stage manager. He was like front and center, and he was the one who got everyone to show up at the rehearsals and do all these things. Um, and I feel like that's something spe that's a special quality about yeah. him that he could just rally the troops and make you want to do something like mm -hmm. be in a rock band that you may never have actually wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. He had that gift of uh, empowering you to do whatever you thought you weren't able to do to get you out of your co comfort zone. Yes. He had that gift. Yes. Part of the idea of the Rebel Run too was to honor that spirit in him, if I, yes. if I may speak for the group, because I think all of us in our way that connected with him in different aspects of his life recognized that he had this, this, uh, this special quality yeah. that's hard to put a name on, but I think it relates to a t-shirt that he had. Yes. Do you, can you want to talk about the t-shirt? I Pavel, remember the last one with Revel. Yeah, it, it had to do with the t-shirt and also um, when my brother was going through his cancer treatment, he sent out emails to a, a, a bunch of his friends just letting them know what was going on and what his experiences were. Mm -hmm. And um, after he finished his treatment, he sent out a last email about it. Um, you know about how he'd he'd beat cancer and um, what his plans were now, and um, musically related. No, after going through the treatment and moving forward, now now it was starting his life post cancer, and that he would um, uh, say yes instead of maybe and revel. Rejoice, celebrate. Mm -hmm. Okay. He would say, "Revel, rejoice, celebrate." Uh -huh. so, Sorry, so but that's that's where it came. Yeah, it came from the idea for this this five k. But you said he uh, oh, he yeah. had cancer and he beat it. Yeah. You know, he was. I guess he had the treatment. What kind of cancer did he have? He had a throat cancer. Oh, it's terrible throat cancer. So, so what happened after he beat the cancer? Did, did he had a relapse? You know, did he? Um, he died from a, uh, complications with the treatment. From the treatment. So, yeah. so you're saying it was an unexpected? It was unexpected. Oh, gosh, so you must have been devastated. Yes. Oh, oh gosh. He, he, it just, uh, it was sudden. Yeah, I can't, I'm sorry. Okay. With complications from the treatment. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. I mean, I've thought a lot about loss since losing Pavel, and this is a, it's been a tremendous loss for my family and for myself. And, um, and I know, you know, it's, it's, I'm sure the same magnitude for everybody, you know, yeah. and it's kind of a humbling thing when, when you have a, a huge loss and it feels 
so devastating to your family. And then it's it's humbling when you you realize how many people are dealing with a similar loss. It's 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 humbling and, and makes you feel, I guess, a, a, a common something in common. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, you know, Pablo's death, I mean, it was devastating losing him and it would have been no matter how. And um, the suddenness, I don't know if it makes it worse because I think for anybody losing their brother, losing their husband, losing their father or son would be devastating. Right. This is very fresh. This happened last this August. This was last August, yeah. Uh, okay, so in June, July, he was declared cancer-free. In June, free. he was cancer-free. And then August, uh, he, he, he was gone. He was gone, yeah. Unexpectedly. So he was only, what, how old was he? He was 52. A lot of people just starting their lives at 52. I yeah. Mean, it looks like he, at 52, he already accomplished so much, and he had so much more to offer. Mm. Well, Ozzy, let's turn to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I introduce you as the lead coach for the university settlement. Mm -hmm. So how did you know of Pavel? Within the community, um, Pavel's name would uh, come up. Um, I would hear about, uh, about him. Um, but the main connection through university settlement was um, there's um, with the, the Revel um, event that's about to come up. I'm still kind of uh, feeling the effects of what she was just saying. Yeah. Um, with uh, the Revel event, they uh, they picked the university settlement as the organization in which they would uh, donate the funds to. You're the charitable organization. Yes, yes, yes exactly. So wow. that is uh, the direct connection um, to Pablo. Um, but like I said, I've known him. I've known of his name um, in the, the neighborhood. I've never directly met him myself. Okay. What does the, the university settlement? What do you guys do? Um, part of the the settlement uh, houses um, with the movement that um, happened uh, in the. 1800s, uh, where um, you had these uh, pretty affluent individuals that came to the communities and realized that, uh, and it was an immigrant community primarily in Lower East Side at the time, um, and they came and they just saw the the level of poverty um, that existed at the time, and they were just like, we want to be able to give uh, um, resources, but in resources in a way that uh, not handouts, but actually like uh, offer opportunities. So they created these settlement houses where some of these affluent people would stay um, and uh, provide services, would teach, um, would uh, just be a beacon of light in a particular way um, to, uh, to allow people then opportunities to kind of uh, see that there's something more mm -hmm. and something better. Uh, so that's where the settlement houses started from, okay. um, was this basic idea. And university settlement was one of the first ones in 1886 to come on the scene and oh. offer those services. Okay, so it sounds like there's several locations today? Um, well, University Settlement is huge at this point. Um, there are um, many different um, many different programs that are under the umbrella of University Settlement, and one of them is the Beacon Program, which I work with. Um, and uh, we, uh, the, the umbrella is huge, but the, the basic idea behind the settlement houses uh, in University Settlement in particular was um, really focusing on the full family, so um, from uh, senior services to um, to kinder services, so you know from from womb to tomb, yeah. basically, um, this idea of just like the the family was yeah. the main purpose of 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 support, and if you can support the family, then people can do great things right, from right. that place. So that's the the basis from okay. which it and, comes and from. what is your role at the university settlement? Um, I started working with University Cinema about 18 years ago. Um, I was uh, I moved to uh, Lower East Side about 20 years ago, and I was working within a community garden at the time with this other organization called Open Road, and we were providing uh, services, uh, youth services at the time. So we were running little uh, after uh, after school type of programming at that time, and then University Settlement moved into. Um, to East Side, which is the, the high school that they currently are right now, and they started to kind of reach out to us to, you know, provide some kind of support and services. So, they pretty much it grew from that um, from that relationship, and I've been I've been coaching and uh, teaching and doing various different things from that point. What forward. kind of coaching do you do? Um, I, I coach track and field, um, soccer, flag football. Um, I'm a martial arts instructor as well, so I do martial arts with them as well. So. Oh, interesting, interesting. Tai Chi type of thing? Uh, it's more Japanese. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've done um, Tai Chi with them before, but like the, the, the skill set that I do is a, a Japanese form um, called Chimbara, and okay. it's uh, more of a fencing uh, art. 
Oh, so the, so foot movement is very important. Oh yeah, very, 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 extremely. Okay, I'm very inter interested in that topic. It's interesting. That's a different uh, cycle that I'm not aware of. The uh, so uh, that is uh, fascinating. And you've been doing this for almost 20 years. Yeah, huh? about 20 years now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you yourself a runner? Uh, yes, uh, I was a sprinter. I was not much of a, a distance runner. Um, I'm kind of uh, moving into it in my my later stages. Okay. I'm just like kind of embracing it. So the 5K is uh, is a, is a doable. Uh, okay. Event for me. Oh, right. <laughs> more oh, like, so you plan? Uh, oh yeah, I'm planning on doing that. All event. three of you will be there. Yes, and hopefully the whole community will turn yes, up. Yes, yes, definitely my whole oh, team okay. will be there. So, so you're the charitable arm. So how are you going to use the funds that are raised to to promote more uh, after school programs? It'll just give us uh, some more tools to use um, because the, the 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 river just opened. I mean, the track at the East River just opened up again. So it'll provide us some uh, some more. Uh, we wanted to start doing hurdling as a, as a sport. Um, and hurdling has always been kind of uh, prohibitive because of the hurdles themselves. And just so being able to kind of buy, you know, uh, more equipment that would help us to kind of expand the program oh, and really offer them great. more that's opportunities great. to like just to have more things under their belt. Okay. Oh, that is, that is wonderful to hear. And I, I mean, I'm sure road runners would love to, you know, to partner up with you, you know, if, oh, not, yeah. if they're not already there. Yeah, yeah we're, we're part of the uh, Rising uh, um, Rising program. Rising New York yeah, um, Road Runners. Yeah, we're part yeah, of that program, program as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, it oh, is. Oh, oh, great, great. All right, let's talk about, we mentioned this Revel 5K. So whose idea, how did that come about? Uh, who, who started that, uh, that initiative? I'm not sure who came up with it. Um, I'm really excited about it because Pavel and I were both getting into running, and I started running maybe, I don't know, a year or two ago, and he was getting into running with his recovery. And we would talk about it a lot, and just about fitness a lot, and our plans and goals, and and, and our progress. Okay. And um, he had been running a lot in the East River Park, and getting ready to do, he was gonna do a Spartan sprint race with his friends uh -huh. and he was also just kind of coming back into himself and um physically and his his plans for for exercise and and he was planning to make exercise and running a part of his kind of fitness yeah yeah and he was hoping to do a 5k maybe a few times a year just to give his um, himself like goals to work yeah, towards yeah. And, and train towards and keep his his like athletic life you know active and yeah, yeah. and um, and because of that I doing a 5k is is really apt and especially something that w like this that would involve the community and benefit the community right, right. and it's just a perfect a perfect way to celebrate okay. him. when would this uh, 5k occur the 5k is going to be on October 21st uh, is it a Sunday? Yeah, it's a Sunday. And it's a one walk, right? So it's a run walk. Everybody's open to everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll be senior citizen friendly. Mm -hmm. it, yep. Seniors get a discount. Discount. Good. Mm -hmm. Kids can go. Mm -hmm. Kids get a discount. Yes. yes. They do. And now, was, it's a family or can family do it with their strollers? Yeah. Yeah, it's a run walk. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Are, yeah. are you going to have uh, a separate kids program or? That's where we're, we were talking about that. I'm not sure. Uh, where that is right now. It may be tough for them to run 5K, but they can do, you know, I've... 100 meters or whatever it is, mm -hmm. because road runners, when they have their 5K, they always have a little kids program, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. So you can have the, the two-year-olds and the three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that would be, part be awesome. Of it. Now, Lydia, you're a campaign manager for the... Uh, I'm a campaign director, actually, for New York City for team and training. So I work for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, which is a charitable organization dedicated to eradicating blood cancers and caring for patients. Um, and so my fundraising campaign that I direct in New York City is we have uh, runner, runners and walkers, and we have triathletes, and we have cyclists. We actually have hikers now as well. Oh. We have a hiking mm. program. We provide training and support um, and additionally fundraising support while they try to make fundraising goals while they train for an event. Um, so I have some experience in this sort of thing, and I fell into it by doing it myself as a participant for another cancer charity. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of all, most of my fundraising has been around uh, cancer, mm -hmm. and with a lot of cancer in my family and friend circle, as yeah. we were talking about a little earlier. And uh, the I also co-founded and coached a youth running club in the Lower East Side called Five Points Runners. 
And a few years back, we had sponsored a similar 5K, actually, that I'm pretty sure, I don't think Pavel ran it, but I'm pretty sure he was around, around. at the time and may have, maybe um, Ella might have run it and they may have been um, helped us fundraise for it. And so we did a similar type run where it was a 5K on the Lower East Side. It was a pretty small race, yeah. but we had some of our families that were involved in the program doing some fundraising to benefit the club, yeah. mm -hmm. which is a nonprofit. Which club? The Five Points? The Five Points Runners, okay. yes. The so, Five Points, that sounds familiar. Was there a movie about that? It was well, Daniel's Day-Lewis? I think there was a movie about it. It was a neighborhood mm -hmm. in, uh, it's a in rough Lower neighborhood. Manhattan. It was a very rough neighborhood. <laughs> There's no wrestling or fighting or anything like that. It's all straight track oh, and field so and that, distance running. That's it. <laughs> so you yourself must live in the Lower East Side. I do, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, How long have you been there? I've been there 13 and a half years. And how big a club is Five Points? We just we just started again for the season, so uh, we'll we'll get back to you on the roster. But we've had anywhere from like forty to sixty on the roster. Oh, that's excellent. I, I must, yeah, I from must ages admit, I, I, similar I, age to what um, I think Ozzy coaches, which is around second grade up mm -hmm. through early high school. Mm -hmm. Most of them being sort of older elementary and middle schoolers is mm -hmm. sort of the, the oh, I'm sweet sorry, spot. So five points include you said elementary school kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. so this is one at a running club. This is like a family. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not adults. It's just kids. It's a uh -huh. it's a youth running club. Uh -huh. So it's just for children. This yeah. is getting more and more interesting. <laughs> when uh, Talia and some of, I think some of this also came out of some of Pavel's neighbors were, um, and close friends, were really looking for a way to celebrate his life and to um, commemorate, you know, that kind of thing. And I mm -hmm. think because of everything what Talia was saying about Pavel reclaiming his body after treatment, which is, you know, very yeah. aggressive on yeah. the body mm -hmm. and feeling like himself again and wanting to yeah. kind of do something athletically, um, this seemed like the type of event yep, I think yep. that everyone agreed was a okay. good fit, you know. Great, great, great. And it's going to be staged where? At the track, which is located on, um, at East 6th Street in the Lower East Side, or sorry, in the FDR mm -hmm. uh, Park. This in is East known River as the Park. East River Track. East, yeah, 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 it's the East River Park at where 6th Street ends, basically. Okay. Yeah. Well, and it was just refurbished. It's been closed for an entire year. And mm -hmm. uh, we believe it just opened yesterday. Yeah, we think so. <laughs> they just painted the lines on last Sunday. So it looks really nice and it's ready to, um, ready to, to house some, run some runners, especially yes. some young ones. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, The yes. young ones have been gunning for that. It's been hard to find other spaces. Yes, yeah, really it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful uh, track. And if they refurbish it, that'll be great. And there's a field in the between. People play soccer. There is soccer like there mm -hmm. pretty much at almost any hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always, it's, yeah. It's more of and a... it's uh, adults, children, every, everything. Yeah, all ages is, in there. Yeah, that's why I love this spot. Yes, yeah, it's, it's more like a community center, but it's outdoors. Right. It is. Next to the uh, East River. Mm -hmm. And you got spectacular views. Yeah. It's yeah. open Beautiful at night. Yeah. The and I think Bridge every and... running club in the city at some point go there to do their speed work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, either either as a team, one on one, they right. got coaches, so mm -hmm. so it's a beautiful area. You can get there. I guess you were telling me there's a relatively new ferry that I didn't know about. Yeah. Tell us about this ferry that's opened up in the Lower East Side. So I think runners know how to get there. It's uh, you can take a bus. You can uh, it's a bit of a hike from the subway, but you can take a bus. You can ride a bike very easily there uh, or a city bike. Um, and they just opened a new ferry route a couple of weeks ago right along the Lower East Side, and it stretches from Wall Street, stops right at Corlears Hook Park and Stuyvesant Cove, and the East 6th Street, the East River Track, is right sort of between those two stops. And then it goes up to 34th Street and across to Long Island City. Excellent. It's a brand new ferry line. Oh, so we're, right. And it's called the Lower East Side Line. Lower so. East Side Line. And there are other ferry lines, because I know they open up one that starts as a sound view, mm -hmm. goes to uh, yes. 34th Street, goes to Wall Street. Yeah, That's so you can transfer also. You can transfer. You can Great. take it from sound view to 34th, and then you can transfer to this ferry. Oh. Yeah. So 34th yeah, Street is a hub. Free transfer. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Is it... Hopefully it'll be 275, like the. It's 275. Uh, hopefully you can take the uh, your metro card. You can't card. use your metro card. You can No, you can buy a ticket on the dock, or you can uh, buy a ticket on the app. There's an app which is really easy mm -hmm. to use. Okay, so it's not MTA related, I guess. I think it, it's MTA funded. I think, yeah. I mean, and I think there is works that they're going to start using the metro cards, but Eventually. you know, yeah, because I saw some a piece about it. Yeah. Which Eventually will make it easy. they'll blend it. Yeah. All right. right now it's not. All right. We only touched the surface here. We we didn't really do justice to Pavel. I mean. What a remarkable man to to have lived 52 years, a, a life well well lived, mm -hmm. and uh, and any final words, any final thoughts? Let's start with you, Ozzy. 
I mean, uh, like you said, uh, just uh, what uh, Pablo represented in terms of community um, is kind of what the, the rebel uh, race is about. Is this this idea that you know we're coming together to celebrate life, um, and you know he's he was a testament of that, and I think that that you've given us the opportunity to uh, uh, share that mm -hmm. um, is amazing, and thank you. My pleasure, Lydia. Um, I just. To echo what Ozzy just said, I am so pleased that it's going to be in the community right where he used to run, um, that we're encouraging people of all ages, all walks of life to participate. I think he would love that. Um, mm -hmm. He would love to see people come together. Oh, he'll be there in spirit, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is the inaugural mm -hmm. Rebel 5K I heard one there's walk. some reluctant family members that might even be, be running, from what I understand. I, they're all going to, they're all <laughs> doing it, nice. yeah. <laughs> There you go. Well, the, the inaugural is always, always very special. Mm -hmm. yes. you, you, you can't repeat that. Yeah. I, I've been to a few inaugurals. Oh, my gosh. You, they just bring tears Well, we there. hope you'll join us. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, the sister, any final thoughts? I'm so excited about this run and just proud to be part of it. And it's really just a great way to remember my brother and celebrate his life. I think he'd be, I mean, I wish he, I wish he could be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll be looking from heaven. Yeah. And, uh, and I should have mentioned you do beautiful artwork with bicycles. So you might do some special work for, for that day, special sketches based on what you see from that day. I might. You should always do work that's, that's inspired by life. So who mm -hmm. knows? Okay. I'm sure he'll probably be watching from heaven. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for that opportunity, Will. Pleasure. Thank you, Bob.